Hi, I'm Peter Beck. I'm the founder and CEO of Rocket Lab. Uh, why don't you join me on a bit of a tour of these facilities? So right now I'm standing in between uh, the composite line and the final assembly line. So behind me, all of the carbon composite tubes and parts of the launch vehicle are manufactured. Then they transition over to the final assembly line uh, where everything gets bolted onto them. And then finally they shoot out the door and down to the launch site. At Rocket Lab, quality is always number one. And as you walk around this factory, you'll see that not any tool is out of place. Everything is in its own place. Uh, you can eat off the floors and this facility is absolutely organized and beautiful. Within this industry, there's a lot of talk about factories of the future. Um, you're standing in a factory of the future, and it's not a CAD image, it is up and running. Uh, and every 20 days, a rocket rolls off this production line. Raw material in one door, 20 days later, rocket out the other. Everything is done here and the other factories. So in this particular factory, we have a whole lot of composites. Uh, we have machine shop, 3D printing, avionics, clean rooms. At the Rocket Lab facility here in Long Beach, we have a lot of things under one roof. We have engine development, we have avionics development, we build solar panels, we have a vast array of CNC machines and 3D printers that allow us to build all these things and test all these items uh, in-house here in Long Beach. So our machine shop facilities have two key functions. Firstly is um, uh, vertical integration and keeping our costs down. So we can manufacture our flight components much, much cheaper in-house than if we were to outsource them. Uh, but secondly, we are still an evolving R&D organisation. We push the limits. We've got our space systems division, we're going to the moon. Um, we are constantly iterating. We've got Hypercurie coming online. They are an iterative process of development. And so you want to be able to turn around new parts really fast. Uh, we want to have that new design on the test stand tomorrow. Uh, the only way you're going to do that is if you maintain that capability capability in a house. We're extremely vertically integrated. As a result, we really understand that product really well. We, um, we've proven that through 20, 20 plus flights. Automation has been a really key part of our composites division. So raw material fibre comes in, uh, it's automated into components, and then those components go onto a giant machine called Rosie the Robot. And within Rosie, all those components are transformed into their finished products, and then out on the production line, all within about 12 hours. Uh, you know, just about everything we've done in our history has is, is included some carbon composites of some description. So not only do we build launch vehicles here, uh, but also of our spacecraft components. Um, behind me you see the composites clean room, and then just over there we've got uh, composite spacecraft elements um, that are used on the capstone mission and uh, many other missions that are going to far destinations. So in the last year our space systems division has doubled and we intend to double again this year. We make flight computers, we make batteries, we make radios, we make solar panels, all in-house, all vertically integrated in order to facilitate the development of full spacecraft. We also have a facility here, and a laboratory where we can do calibrations for reaction wheels, star trackers, and all the equipment that's required for guidance, navigation, and control systems of spacecraft. Rocket Lab is responsible for a lot of firsts. One of the most important being actually 3D printing of rocket engine and rocket engine components. We are the 3D printing experts within the space industry. Our first rocket engine was 3D printed over eight years ago, and now we have 200 of them that have gone to space. What 3D printing enables us to do is meet our manufacturing rate, and that's one engine every 24 hours. Within Rocket Lab, we have multiple factories placed all around the globe. Uh, the engines are produced up in the Long Beach factory and they arrive down here to New Zealand uh, where they're tested and then finally integrated onto the launch vehicle and then ultimately launched to space. Before the launch vehicle gets to the launch site, uh, the elements of the launch vehicle go through a significant amount of testing through our propulsion test complexes. Uh, this enables us to begin testing right down from the engine hot fire level through to stage testing, uh, through to final assembly before it's shipped to the launch site. So at Rocket Lab we run a very, very deep hardware in the loop program. So basically the whole launch vehicle is laid out, uh, or actually use the components of the launch vehicle uh, to simulate flights uh, and, and the build of the vehicle as it's coming down the production line. The Hiddle guys will be able to determine uh, if there's an error in the launch vehicle before it's even built. And those guys can actually fly that launch vehicle to orbit before it's even built on the factory and determine if there's any issues with any of those calibrations. But all of our facilities around the world uh, incorporate not just production, but all of our design and analysis and development teams. And I think that's critically important uh, to not segregate your production from also your engineering and your design. So throughout all our facilities, all of those functions are distributed. Look, our team has perfected manufacturing. Uh, the next step for us is, is reusability and recovery. And we've already had uh, multiple successful re-entries re and also two successful splashdowns where we've actually recovered the booster in wonderful shape. And right in front of me here is actually uh, the next recovery booster uh, on the way down the production line. 
So what that really means is that uh, from a manufacturing perspective we don't have to build as many rockets because we can literally bring these, these launch vehicles back and these rockets back, refurbish them, put them back on the line and fly them again. So these factories represent a huge investment by the company over, over many, many years. And we've got to the point now with these factories where uh, you know, any changes that we need to do to the launch vehicle or any increase in production, it is really quite trivial. Right behind me, you see the Mission Operations Center for Space Systems. We currently operate two spacecraft on orbit. All of our future spacecraft for space systems will be operated right out of here in our headquarters in Long Beach, California. It's co-located with our engineering department, allows for fast iteration with the team, and allows for seamless operations and calibrations of the systems that we launch. We're doing a vast portfolio of missions here, all the way from low Earth orbit to interplanetary here at the Space Systems Division in Long Beach. We're doing a mission to Mars, which is two spacecraft, uh, for a NASA mission called Escapade. We're also doing several LEO missions for commercial and government customers that'll exercise the full capabilities of the engineering staff here in Long Beach. Our first launch site is Launch Complex One, located in the Mahia Peninsula, New Zealand. It is the world's first privately operated launch site, uh, capable of 120 launches per year. The reason we can achieve such a high launch frequency out of LC1 is that we're located in a very remote part of the world and our wide access to azimuths and inclinations uh, gives us high frequency but also high access to a range of orbits. Having two pads at LC1 offers us uh, incredible flexibility. Uh, we're no longer constrained by a particular customer's delays or what's going on at a specific launch pad with a specific launch vehicle. So the two pads fundamentally enables frequency but you know, it also gives us uh, the backup and redundancy should we need more opportunities in short order. Uh, the beauty of owning your own launch site is that if we want to go tomorrow, we launch tomorrow. LC1's uh, the home to uh, many world-class facilities that support launch. Uh, on top of the two launch pads that we have, uh, we have a host of clean rooms, um, even capable of processing uh, spacecraft fueling activities at the launch site itself. We've also got an integration facility for the launch vehicle. Uh, we also host the range control center, uh, two kilometers away from the launch pad, that uh, house our critical operators before launch. So operating our own site at LC1 uh, gives us incredible flexibility. Uh, we essentially own the schedules. Uh, we determine when vehicles can get launched and can get wet dressed and tested. Part of that includes operating our own range safety team, so we have no reliance on external contractors or government entities to provide that service. Uh, what that enables, again, is incredible flexibility. Um, we control the spend, we control the way we operate, and therefore allows us to provide a very lean, commercially viable service. So in support of our test and launch sites, uh, we have four key uh, control centers, two mission control centers and two range control centers. They are all interconnected, and it doesn't matter where you are, you can support a test or launch operation uh, from any one of these sites. And this enables us to deliver a global launch capability, um, whether it's for a launch service or a satellite service. Uh, launch Complex 2 is based on Wallops Island, Virginia. Um, it was strategically selected to be in Virginia, uh, again, primarily because of its uh, low uh, activity. Uh, we've got access to uh, a relatively high part of the launch calendar at uh, Wallops itself. Also includes the integration control facility that's located off base, so it's completely deconflicted from any on base operations. Uh, the ICF is a one stop shop. Uh, it's the place where we integrate our payloads onto electrons, as well as house the uh, local operations team uh, to command and control the launch. Having built uh, multiple launch sites in the past, we certainly have the ability to, to set up shop really anywhere on the planet. We've been able to navigate the local regulations and uh, meet all the compliance requirements, as well as do the infrastructure, get the engineering done in record time. So you can't have launch and spacecraft operations without a network of ground stations. We own and operate some of our own ground stations, as well as have a strategic partnership with KSAT that gives us ability to get data from launch or space on demand. One of the strongest attributes of Rocket Lab is the team, uh, and no, no more is this prevalent than the production team. So these guys here uh, have put 20 launch vehicles on the pad, and as you can see around me, uh, probably another 10 in, in, in production. And you know, the team here is the best in the world. Uh, Rocket Lab is really, really well known for taking incredibly complex aerospace structures and components and systems and just producing them at volume.